talking about balls deep. I'm talking about balls deep. I'm talking about balls deep in love. What is up, fucks? It's I, Jets, friendly neighborhood stalker. And we are here to do a video together. By Miss Foodie Beauty. Big Bitter Me. So many names for her. We're not going to be looking at a whole video. Just a smidgen. Just a little bit. Just a touch. The reason we're only doing a touch is because for the past couple weeks, she's been just doing live streams and just driving all over fucking town instead of been doing what she's supposed to. She's been going to grocery stores and shit like that and not doing any type of social distancing like she's supposed to. And let's see what the results are. That's what we're gonna look at today. Now, you guys know how I like to do my videos. We watch a video together and we cringe in unison like the family that we are. Comments or comments are due. Then I have a surprise for you. We're going to discuss something in the end. It's a little bit different. Something we haven't discussed before. Because we're a bunch of fucking adults. And it's going to be fun. Kind of like adults. Alright? Let's go. You alright there? You good? I really want to come on here with a big smile today and be my bubbly self, but it might be a bit hard. But you're here, you're here to watch me, and you're probably here to watch me so that we can take our minds off of what's going on in the world right now, even for like 20 minutes. Let's stop right there. A little bit of context. These little live streams and shit she's been doing driving around town she hasn't been wanting to talk about everything that's going on and she is actually getting pissed when people bring up the social distancing not having to go out if you don't have to she's been blocking people and shutting people down if they mention anything about the pandemic and how you're supposed to be not doing shit like she's been doing it's funny Taking our mind off what's been going on. Yeah. This should be interesting. Sounds like some shit has gone down. Are you scared? I'm scared. Sounds like shit got real. Let's, let's pay attention now. So, um, if you're trying to do that by coming here and watching this video, I'm going to also try to forget about my problems for a while. And just enjoy my dinner that I made. And so let's get to it. First, we have Coldy, Coldy in the house, the coldest water bottle. Check the link in the description below if you want to uh, win a chance to have your own Coldy. Product placement. Very good, high quality water bottle. So check it out. So I have a little can of low sodium V8. I like those. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I didn't know that Campbell's made a V8. Yeah, it's, um, I get the low sodium ones, cut corners where I can. And this, my friends, is my homemade chicken meatball stew. My dog threw up something almost exactly like that once. It was horrible. It was a bitch to clean up, too. It's a tomato base. I... I'm sorry, I didn't, I lost some of the footage of filming it, but um, basically just sauteed onions, um, chicken meatballs, I just put spices and make them into a meatball, you can use any spice of your choice, um, tomato paste, one small can, um, about four cups of water, and some seasonings, a bit of soy sauce, uh, so yeah, and they're a bit spicy because I used some of that Boldak Samyang chicken sauce. It's I really like it. Um, yeah, so that's what it is, and it's over some fluffy jasmine rice. So 
And if it wasn't spicy enough, I'm gonna add some sriracha. What is up with Amberlynn and her using sriracha and tapatio and shit? Has, is, is their taste buds so fucked up that they need something spicy because they can't taste shit? Is that, is that it? Is that what's wrong? Like, because they be dumping that shit on everything. Is that what it is? Because you know how I do. I love sriracha. I have napkins today, so I'm all prepared. So let's get to, let's get to. All right, so let's um, try the sauce first on a bit of rice. Just finished cooking, it's piping hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it has chicken broth. It eliminates that really tomatoey taste. Mm -hmm. shh, I say shh. You are not my father or mother. So don't you motherfucking shush me. Mm -mm. I do not think so. You better go shush one of your cats. You n n do not shush me. I do not give a fuck. <laughs> that is good. That is rich. That's so good. I let it simmer for a good hour. Mm. Yeah. I fry the meatballs. I make them into balls. No egg, no none of that crap, just spices. Roll it. I use one package of ground chicken with some peanut oil, enough, you know, so that they don't stick. Fried them. Added the onions, fried it. Added the tomato paste, fried it. You get the pattern. <laughs> Let's try a meatball. Let's cut into that. Now the meat is kind of lean, so like the chicken meat is extra lean. Mm. Those meatballs are nice and seasoned. This is a really stick to the ribs kind of meal. You know? <laughs> mm. Mm. Why do you feel beauty butt? Mm -mm. I'm so rude. No, I'm good. You just, I don't get a beauty bite. I'm, I just finished eating. It's all you, girl. I'll let it cool off. I don't want you to burn your mouths. So, <clears throat> Goldie, <laughs> um, this water bottle, I've, I use it like religiously every day. I carry it everywhere with me by this. Um, <laughs> I fill it, put some ice, I fill it up, drink about three of these a day, which is a lot of water. <laughs> But the ice lasts like two days. <laughs> so, beauty sip. Mm, pinky out. All right, open wide. Beauty bite. <laughs> mm. I prefer a wooden spoon. Yeah, we we've, we've seen you serve your with that wooden serving spoon in your mouth. You know that's for stirring and serving food, right? It's not to be used as silverware to eat with. I can't. I need. I can't find my utensils. I don't know if I already packed them, like the wooden ones I had. <sighs> I was gifted a good set. Where I put them, unless BB put brought them to work. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this is so good, guys. Um, forgive the clown mouth. 
My lipstick goes everywhere. So, now I'm scared. I know a lot of you are going to roll your eyes and say, oh, we told you, we told you. Um, I'm not going to be eating out for as long as, uh, you know, this whole coronavirus is still running rampant because... Oh, really? Do tell. What has changed your mind? Before you said it didn't matter. The fast food joints were open so people could get food. What has changed your mind so quickly? Please, do tell. on the news today there was an article that a McDonald's I sometimes frequent not lately but uh, one of the employees was tested positive I tested positive for coronavirus and the last shift was like April 4th um, I'm glad I haven't been there in a while. Okay, so you're all for number one. First off, just to ask this question. So if someone tests positive and is working at a fast food joint, you blast their shit all over the internet? Or all over the news? If they're working at a fast food joint during a pandemic, you just put their face on the news or their name? That is a horrible thing to do. So-and-so tests positive for the coronavirus. That asshole served me food. I'm going to his fucking house. Anyone ever thought of that? Is it just me? I don't know. That, that That's the first thing that came to my head. Someone's going to go over there and beat that kid's ass. Just because he was working the fucking window. The McDonald's drive through He was collecting cash from people and he accidentally got the coronavirus. And anyways, what do you mean you weren't going to that one lately? You just went to two different fucking McDonald's and then pissed in the bushes on the side of the road. And you know, he may have started showing signs Sweetheart, but you're, you spread that shit when you're asymptomatic, meaning before you show signs, before you show symptoms. So he probably served you before he was showing signs of sickness, which means he felt perfectly good but was still spreading that shit. You need a helmet. I'm going to make one for you and Amberlynn because you don't pay attention to shit, do you? But, poor employee too, you know, like it's just, who knows how many people were infected while that person was asymptomatic and, so, it really did get me thinking, but you know, people have been being found positive at pharmacies too, at grocery stores, a couple here, the thing is, I go to the pharmacy less frequently than I was eating out. So eliminating the eat out, fast food, stuff like that, is just eliminating one other risk factor, which is good, right? What in the fuck are you talking about? You can have someone who's has the coronavirus in pharmacies and in fast food joints. Yeah, that's that's true. And you don't go to pharmacies as much as you go to fast food joints. What the fuck does that mean? The fuck, how is that relevant? You shouldn't go to either unless it's absolutely necessary, but you went to fast food joints anyways. You need a fucking helmet. Why are you making no sense? <laughs> 
Why don't you just, here, try this, try this, say, guys, you're right. As much as you told me and I didn't listen, I know you were just trying to help me and keep me safe and I just wasn't listening to you because, you know, but, you know, something happened. The McDonald's I usually visit, one of the employees came up as positive and the few times I went there, he's working there and he was asymptomatic and I'm kind of freaking out. You know, I apologize. I know you guys told me, but you know, now it's really sinking in and I'm scared. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. It's that easy. And then you say this. Uh from now on I'm going to I'm going to start really heeding the warnings and trying to do my best to follow the rules. That's all you gotta say. But your ego is so fucking just huge, you can't even do the right thing and say something normal. Oh my god. Can't even say something normal. It's okay to be wrong. It is. You just have to apologize and understand what you did wrong. Why does everybody think it's oh it's not okay to be wrong? You just just acknowledge that you were wrong. So that's what I'm gonna do, and really only go to the grocery store as infrequently as possible. I need to do like a big new order, like stock up order for the new place, and then you know. Um, Well, now that we've, now that we've seen that something as easy as someone getting, testing positive at a food, fast food joint, making someone realize that there's, there's no, no reason to be stubborn in this. You really need to protect yourself. This is a pandemic. But you know what? Foodie Beauty has no power in this world. She really is just, the only thing she has to do is protect herself. It's just that everybody cares about her and was asking her to take care of herself. What she failed to do? Well, heed the warnings. We're not saying she's sick. But there is someone with power, Mr. Trey Hollins. And I want you to listen to him and tell me what you guys think. I'm not going to tell you what to think. I just want you to listen what he said and tell me what it sounds like. And I will see you guys later. Leave it in the comment section on what this guy is saying and what you think. Me, I'm gonna get out of here. I love you guys. Make sure you hang up your happy faces. Don't get any stains on them. Make sure you stay in your house, nice and safe. No lighting fires, make sure you recycle, and I will see you guys later. Deuces. There has been more and more pressure by Republican lawmakers toward Donald Trump in order to preemptively, prematurely, however you want to call it, open the country back up, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic with a virus that we still do not have wide testing, widespread testing available for. And so one of the interviews that has caught many people's attention has to do with a GOP lawmaker out of the state of Indiana. He's representative Trey Hollingsworth. And he believes that it's imperative, incredibly important to open the economy back, back up immediately. And the way that he made his argument was 
not delicate to say the least, and huh. certainly not humane to say the least. But without further ado, let's hear what he has to say. The decision that needs to be made is to get Americans back to work, back to their jobs, back to their businesses, back to school, back to churches. That's the decision that needs to be made. We have to recognize that no amount of money out of Washington, D.C., no amount of effort out of Washington, D.C. is going to solve this problem like Americans can solve this problem. That's the strength of this country. and We've got to understand that and get Americans back to work, back to their businesses, back to school and back to churches. That's where they want to be when I talk to them every single day. There is no zero harm choice here. Both of these decisions will lead to harm for individuals, whether that's dramatic economic harm or whether that's the loss of life. But it is always the American government's position to say in the choice between the loss of our way of life as Americans and the loss of life of American lives, we have to always choose the latter. It is policymakers' decision to put on our big boy and big girl pants and say, this is the lesser of these two evils, and it is not zero evil, but it is the lesser of these evils, and we intend to move forward that direction. That is our responsibility, and to abdicate that is to insult the Americans that voted us into office. 